Um, I, I'd like to read these seven principles, uh, the seven hermetic principles. And I'm going to, uh, the reason why I'm going to read this is because they were able to consolidate it into paragraphs. Um, I'm not going to read the preface or anything, but the idea of it, this is for anyone who um, maybe is interested. These principles seem to cover the basis for um, for pretty much everything in life. Everything that we need to know, at least according to Hermetic philosophy. So, uh, with a, for, without further ado, here we go. The seven Hermetic pr principles. It says, the principles of truth are seven. And I wanted to note that before I started. The number seven, the idea of seven, um, and as above, so below, many of these holy ideas uh, were carried forth from Gnostic traditions. The principles of truth are seven. He who knows these, understandingly, possesses the magic key before whose touch all the doors of the temple fly open, the Kabbalion. The book I'm reading from is the Kabbalion. It's called the Kabbalion, but this is not the Kabbalion. This is, uh, the, the Kabbalion was actually a word of mouth teaching that was passed down through the ages. And we're fortunate enough to um, at least have a grasp of it, uh, a little bit of it written down so we can start to understand it on our own. I don't think these ideas were lost to time so much because they were obscured, but the church did destroy a lot of the Gnostic teachings but I think uh, much of it was lost because nobody would listen. So, it says, The seven hermetic principles upon which the entire hermetic philosophy is based are as follows. One, the principle of mentalism. Two, the principle of correspondence. Three, the principle of vibration. Four, the principle of polarity. Five, the principle of rhythm. Six, the principle of cause and effect. And seven, the principle of gender. These seven principles will be discussed and explained as we proceed with these lessons. A short explanation of each, however, may as well be given at this point. And this is the short version. So, number one, the principle of mentalism. The all is mind. The universe is mental. This principle embodies the truth that all is mind. It explains that the all which is the substantial reality underlying all the outward manifestations and appearances which we know under the terms of the material universe, the phenomena of life, matter, energy, and, in short, all that is apparent to our material senses, is spirit, which in itself is unknowable and undefinable. Those are capitalized. But which may be considered as a thought of, and thought of as, a universal, infinite, living mind. It also explains that all the phenomenal world or universe is simply a mental creation of the all, subject to the laws of created things, and that the universe as a whole, and in its parts or units, has its existence in the mind of the all, in which mind we live and move and have our being. This principle, by establishing the mental nature of the universe, easily explains all of the varied mental and psychic phenomena that occupy such a large portion of the public attention, and which, without such explanation, are non-understandable and defy scientific treatment. An understanding of this great hermetic principle of mentalism enables the individual to readily grasp the laws of the mental universe, and to apply the same to his well-being and advancement. The hermetic student is enabled to apply intelligently the great mental laws instead of using them in a haphazard manner. With the master key in his, his possession, the student may unlock the many doors of the mental and psychic temple of knowledge and enter the same freely and intelligently. This principle explains the true nature of energy, power, and matter, and why and how all these are subordinate to the mastery of mind. One of the old Hermetic Masters wrote long ages ago, He who grasps the truth of the mental nature of the universe is well advanced on the path to mastery. And these words are as true today as the time they were first written. Without this master key, mastery is impossible, and the student knocks in vain at the many doors of the temple. So, I think many of us have gotten to that point where we understand that everything is mind, but how far does that metaphor extend? 
and is anything not mind? <clears throat> because at this point, to me, everything is part of the mind. Every fabrication we create, every dream we have, is part of our little creations, which we can see manifested in the larger picture, which is the principle of correspondence, the next principle, which I'm going to read. So here's number two, the principle of correspondence. As above, so below. As below, so above. How many times have we heard that one? Um, this principle embodies the truth that there is always a correspondence between the laws and phenomena of the various planes of being and life. The old hermetic axiom ran into these words, as above, so below, as below, so above. And the grasping of this principle gives one the means of solving many a dark paradox and hidden secrets of nature. There are planes beyond our knowing, but, but when we apply the principle of correspondence to them, we are able to understand much that would otherwise be unknowable to us. This principle is of universal application and manifestation on the various planes of the material, mental, and spiritual universe. It is a universal law. The ancient hermetists cons considered this principle as one of the most important mental instruments by which man was able to pry aside the obstacles which hid the view of the unknown. Its use even tore aside the veil of Isis to the extent that a glimpse of the face of the goddess might be caught. Just as a knowledge of the principles of geometry enables a man to measure distant suns and their movements while seated in his observatory, so a knowledge of the principle of correspondence enables a man to reason intelligently from the known to the unknown, studying the monad. He understands the archangel. This point cannot be really expressed or stressed, but that's probably the most eloquently that I've ever heard it put. Understanding the correspondence between us and the larger universe. Basically, in a nutshell, what it's saying is that uh, by watching the planets of the man, you know, we understand the planets of our solar system. By understanding the planets of our solar system and their relation to the sun and to us, we understand its cosmic purpose in the galaxy. Um, by understanding the smallest atom and how it functions, if we can understand that, we can understand how the entire universe works. And this really kind of ties in the root of many ancient philosophies, things that cannot be expressed in words but can be understood through metaphors and archetypes. And when a person gets to that point, it becomes difficult to convey their message, and this is why people, uh, you know, the message is often lost or disguised in anthropomorphic terms. I guess I'll read one more, because I, w I wasn't going to read through them all, but this one's good. The principle of vibration. Nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates. The Kabbalion. This principle embodies the truth that everything is in motion, everything vibrates, nothing is at rest. Facts which modern science endorses, and which, which each new scientific discovery tends to verify. And yet this hermetic principle was enunciated thousands of years ago by the masters of ancient Egypt. This principle explains that the difference between different manifestations of matter, energy, mind, and even spirit result largely from varying rates of vibration. From the all, which is a pure spirit, down to the grossest form of matter, all is in vibration. The higher the vibration, the higher the position on the scale. The vibration of spirit is at such an infinite rate of intensity and rapidity that it is practically at rest, just as a rapidly moving wheel seems to be motionless. And at the other end of the scale, there are gross forms of matter whose vibration are so low as to seem at rest. Between these poles, there are millions upon millions of varying degrees of vibration. From corpuscle and, uh, Sorry, corpus, corpus, corpuscle? I know the word, but I just can't pronounce it. Corp, corpuscle, corp, corpuscle and electron, atom and molecule, to worlds and universes, everything is in vibratory motion. This is also true on the planes of energy and force, which are but varying degrees of vibration, and also on the mental planes, whose states depend upon vibrations, and even on to the spiritual planes. An understanding of this principle with the appropriate formulas 
enables hermetic students to control their own mental vibrations as well as those of others. The mastery also apply this principle to the conquering of natural phenomena in various ways. He who understands the principle of vibration has grasped the scepter of power, says one of the old writers. The next one is the principle of polarity. I won't get into reading all that, but um, I think that's a fascinating, you know, the scepter of power, you know. What is meant by that? Obviously, these old masters didn't want power over people. But it says right there, you know, you can change the vibration and intensity of your thoughts and those of others. And I think that many of us know that we're affected by others. Some people even go as far as to think that, um, you know, they're trying to put thoughts into our brains, you know, using harp and these various, uh, all of these, you can start to see all of these fears and threats of, in society um, as metaphors and archetypes for our deeper fears. The, bo the boogeyman, you know, the devil, evil, all these different things that we label, and we all have different ideas of what they are. But understanding that everything is a vibratory force allows you to change and transmute your own thoughts and not let others' emotions affect you. And basically, it's not about any type of major project to take over your mind or mind control through the air or sending out signals to you know, tell you what to do. It's more of we're allowing ourselves to fall into negative ways of thinking and that makes us more susceptible to attacks we're more vulnerable in other words we're weaker when we're not integrated so integrate 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 and that's what integrity is all about it's integrating within the society within the universe finding our place so i hope i made myself somewhat rational there but uh i uh I find that sometimes when it's written down, it's easier to understand. <laughs> Maybe in this case, not so much. But uh, anyway, hope you all have a great day. Take care.